morning. Welcome to the freaking vlog. Pulling up in the 1978 Porsche. Guys, we need to figure out what we want to name this thing. I've heard Leroy for the song Leroy Brown, Hobbs Jr. I've heard, I don't know, so many different. We need to figure out a name for this. This is, this is my baby. Finally saw a Targa. I love the 78, the SC. It was the first year they did the SC in the 911. And the color, copper metallic, not one you see every day. Just screams retro, all original. So everything in the car, we'll have to just do a, a fully devoted car video, but I'm loving it. Super excited, putting some miles on it. My goal is to keep it as original as possible while keeping everything updated on it and just keep it running great, so. All right guys, fitness culture looks a little bit different. In the last couple months, I've wanted to have more of a hands-on approach here at Fitness Culture, so I've been in here every day helping run operation stuff, making sure that we have stuff at the front desk, we have some new weights, we have some new things going on. Eventually, my goal for this gym is to be, to be out of this building in the next two to three years, build something, have proper functioning locker rooms, cold plunge, saunas, just the whole nine yards, keeping the barbershop that we'll get to. We have our front desk actually kind of in the building, we just figured, we could better utilize some space. So right now, our operation hours, we have a man front desk from eight in the morning till seven. That's Monday through Friday. So if you wanna get a day pass, you gotta come during those hours, that eight to seven, Monday through Friday. And then on the weekends, we're 7.30 till noon. So again, right now we have it set up to where you can only get a day pass if you come talk to the front desk, sign a waiver. We are working on software that allow people to sign up online, get a day pass, so they will then get a code that they'll be able to use at the front door to get in. So as a gym owner, that if you want things to run smoothly, if you want cameras, so many different things, if you don't want people to be able to tailgate and come in during non-business hours, insurance, all of these operating costs at a gym, our gym right now, to operate it functionally, it's around $20,000 a month. Um, and then right now we're doing about 30,000 in profit. So we're making five to six at the end of the day because I also am putting money back into upgrading equipment. What we want to eventually do is be able to self-contain and own a building and then rent out space, lease out space to other businesses. And that's where I think you really get profitable as a gym owner. So right now we have five personal trainers in the gym, all independent. So the reason I wanted to go independent is because I think people, personal trainers especially, when they take ownership of their business, they're always gonna do better. If I'm sitting here taking money out of their pocket for each training membership, like you see with a lot of big box gyms, it becomes an issue. So right now they just pay $500 a month and they can train as many clients as they want in the gym. So we have five really good trainers, all with certs. Coming into the gym, you you see we got a new desk a new display case and again it's about trying to find in this space enough room to for people to come and touch things we have some fitness culture shirts hats obviously all of these things will be on the fitness culture gym website and then we have some optimum nutrition subs we have alani nutrition at ghost we have time to time fitness culture hydro jugs those hydro jugs if you guys have seen the stanley craze everyone loving stanley hydro jugs in my opinion are way better they don't leak we have haven backpacks which are super cool and then we have other fitness culture merch. As we start looking to do more strength collective stuff, um, Gymshark and I obviously have parted ways. I was fortunate enough that they allowed me to keep the name Strength Collective. It was kind of one I came up with with my initials SC and I never wanted to call it Steve Cook. So coming up with the Strength Collective line with Gymshark that I did for all those years, I'm now able to take that and run with that. But we have treadmills here. So right here, here's the cardio area. We kind of switch things up. Treadmills, ellipticals, stair steppers. This is where you're gonna see a lot of the, the people doing cardio. We didn't wanna have too many cardio machines, but you can see the gym isn't too different from there. We try to keep all of our free weights section here, do a functional area in the back. We have all of our racks in the middle there, our dual racks, meaning there's one on each side. One is a little bit deeper. The other one's a little bit more shallow. CrossFit functional area back there where the GHD's at. We have bumper plates, we have a salt bike. So it's kind of like set up to where there's functional area if people wanted to do more CrossFit type stuff. We have an assault runner, we have rowers. We want to get, we will be getting some gears. So the ski erks on the, on, the, on the table, also box jumps, sled pushes, all of that good stuff over there on the turf going back towards the rack area. And then we have our, I would call this, this is our, like our hammer strength area. This is all our mach machines that are plate loaded. Everything that we wanted to have plate loaded 
pretty much here. Dumbbells right now, we just got some new dumbbells. They go up to 160s. Those 160s don't get used all that often. The dumbbells, all of the space with the mirrors in front, big massive rack over here with your multi-function purpose or multi-purpose cable station. So we can do rows, pull downs, cable stuff that you, you know, you always work in and accessory stuff. Coming into this area, all of our leg stuff. So we wanted to kind of separate things to where you had upper body, and then you had legs, so you can kind of stay in one area. You have the Smith machine over here. But all of this stuff, basically, we set this up as a place to film all of our fitness culture app content. So our fitness culture app, we were tired of filming in commercial gyms, having to get permission. So set up a gym for ourselves and it's just grown organically. Like nothing in here, we never took out a loan. We never did any of that. And now we have about 500 members. Would love to get that to about to a thousand. That way we get into a new gym. We have a lot of people who come through from Salt Lake, from come up from Vegas, go to Zions National Park. So we get a lot of day passes in here too. So again, if you guys are ever coming through St. George, come check us out. We'd love to have you. Upstairs, we're gonna go up there in a second. That's where all of our offices, podcast studio and Apollo and Sage the swimwear all of that is up there it's kind of like our, our new our new headquarters for everything else we're doing so we'll go check that out moving from the gym into the office space whole building is about 12,000 square feet so the gym space is like seven and a half we have the barbershop so we have bathrooms we have kind of like a old barbershop that we were using that we're going to turn in either to like a physical therapist or maybe even a posing room. So we get some things going on up here. We repainted everything right now. This main area is all headquarters for Apollo and Sage. Um, all of this is stock. We've got everything set up, shipping, customer service, Morgan, Kelby, Ashton. They take care of orders and making sure everything is going out properly. We have our own little personal stock here. I have good. I have good memories working with Optimum Nutrition. They were always, I felt like if, if I was a supplement, I would have been an Optimum Nutrition gold standard protein shake. And then from there, Morgan's, this is Morgan's office. Her and Kelby, Kelby is her assistant. They are in here. This is where her culture of motion. So that's her app. So she has, I have fitness cultures. Her app, culture of motion, obviously is more about, I would say movement based patterns. So obviously she has a lot more gymnastics type movements, mobility. They're in here every day. They work, they actually work their butts off. We have two bathrooms, boom, boom, his and hers. This is kind of just a random utility slash camera stuff. I'm so bad. Like I'm always buying random camera stuff for GoPros and then forgetting about them. Here are Ashton and my office. Ashton's working away diligently in there. We're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to take back my too long putter out of there. Where I'm typically working out of trying to get more organized. So that's been my big thing. We have the good old big man on campus, all the bodybuilding.com day stuff on the wall. Good times. I get sent a lot of shoes, believe it or not. Workout shoes, running shoes. So these are the new rads. This is their running shoe. Pretty sweet, actually. Very cool. And then this is their workout shoe. I like the gum sole bottoms. And then this is Painter. I have their golf shoes. Their golf shoes are my favorite. They just came out with a cool workout shoe. Some be, I haven't worn any of these yet to work out in. I think I'm gonna be trying to wear, I'm gonna be wearing these today. I love that highlighter color. But yeah, they went from golf to now also some training stuff. So got a little carbon plate in there. Pretty cool. Besides that, it was Morgan and I's anniversary yesterday. Ashton and his wife, Ashton definitely, Ashley's definitely batting up. Punching above your weight, as they say in England. When I said there's more expenses than you might think when you run a gym, it's kind of where we keep internet, payroll, sales tax, cleaners, all of these things come through. So we got to figure out when you start running an actual business, you start got to keep keep track of P&L. Yep, offices here and then hallway. Sometimes I'll just sit here and creep out on other people's form. Tell people I'm watching them on their form. Yep. This is kind of the nice slow time. I would say the busiest times in our gym from about 7 a.m. till 10, and then it picks up at around four to about seven as well. Podcast room. Morgan and I actually just filmed our first podcast. The podcast itself, I felt like was pretty dang good. We don't have, you know, a sexy podcast studio yet or super sexy equipment, but it works. We got lights, we got a headset, we got the, the Rode mics. We're gonna be doing more podcasts. It's called Keeping Up With The Cooks. I'm also gonna be doing my own podcast and even maybe like a golf podcast because I love, I watch a lot of golf, I play a lot of golf. And that's kind of been something that's been fun for me. This is a room that, oh, it was rough. When we moved in, this was very rough. Obviously we have some extra, 
We picked up a lot of equipment from a gym in town that was going out of business. We still have some of that up here, but we painted it in this kitchen. We don't get that many people up here except for occasional trainers, the barber shop that's downstairs, and then everyone who's up in the office. So barber shop down there, it's been here since basically we've opened. They started off in a small room and then they got bigger and bigger and bigger. So Eli is our, our head barber. He has his own, I guess they run their own barber shop. It's a separate business completely. They just rent out space from us, but we love having it. So if you guys ever want to book a haircut, if you know you're coming in advance, they do book up pretty quick. So if you know you're coming to visit St. George, want to come to the gym, get in and get a haircut as well. We'll put that link in the description. Eli's website will be barbersofmerchant.com. Right now you can just go to his Instagram. I'll link that in here. So if you need an appointment, get set up. This is the room that we got to figure out what to do with. We've gone through, do we want to make an opposing room? Leave in the comments below what you guys think we should do, like physical therapist, massage therapist, Graston, Gua Sha, cupping person, like a torture room, I think Dragon's Lair. Um, Flex Lewis's gym, they have a really good soft tissue work person in there. Or posing room. What do you think would be utilized more? This used to be the barbershop. You can see how much the barbershop's grown. Right now, my biggest issue is we don't have locker rooms and we don't have a recovery studio. So seeing some cool gyms like Ryan Terry's new gym gave me inspiration that I wanna go out there and, and build something new, something a little bit bigger, more robust, has more, more options for not just locker rooms and recovery centers, but also a little cafe, the barbershop, um, coffee, coffee company, set it up as a place where people can come work out, get a haircut, work on their laptops, have lunch, get a coffee, do all of those fun things. So now that we are living in St. George, we're gonna have our baby here in St. George. This is home, doing a lot more hands-on stuff, like I said, with the gym. And that means eventually building our own little dream spot where we can have the warehouse side, maybe put a golf simulator in it, have all of our merch, shipping things out, having all of that fun stuff that people might not see when they come into the gym that's there. And then obviously this big, beautiful gym as well. So kind of it for the gym tour. If you guys have any questions, leave them below. Um, this is just kind of a going over a little life update on the business side of things. Yeah, let me know if you guys, what do you guys want to see or hope to see in the future.